This is Michael Orl of MobileBurn.com and today I have with me two different versions of the HTC Touch Pro 2. The one in my right hand is for Verizon Wireless and this one over here is the Sprint version. Very similar design. Um, the Sprint version is a bit of a gray color scheme on the front, uh, black on the Verizon, black buttons on the Verizon on the bottom as opposed to the chrome look on the Sprint version. You can see uh, they both have a soft touch rubberish um, back design. Uh, each has a dedicated speakerphone mute button. The speakerphone is automatically activated as soon as you flip over the phone. And both have 3.2 megapixel autofocus cameras. Uh, the design on the back is quite different from one to the other. A uh, little bit of a orange on gray mesh look here as opposed to a view of the world on the back of the Verizon model. If we open up and expose the keyboards, you can see they're also very similar. Uh, both have the same exact layout um, in terms of the major keys. Uh, some of the other features like you know the Euro key and you know pound symbol and stuff like that's different on, on one version, you know, the sprint version versus the Verizon. But the keys have the exact same feel and um, just color highlights are a little bit different. No soft keys, so you actually have to grab the screen whenever you want to access the soft key function. Uh, one of the best keyboards I've used in a long, long time has a really nice click to it, spaced out, um, but part of that reason is it's such a large device. Take a look at the hardware features. You can see we've got volume controls on the left-hand edge. Not too much on the right-hand edge except for the stylus. A little bit hard to pull out at times. Um, quite honestly, I've never really had a use for it. Um, never needed it. It's quite finger-friendly very large wide BGA um, touchscreen display so you can it's really quite finger friendly and we'll show you some of the touch flow 3D aspects uh, a little bit later on of course there's the standard HTC mini USB uh, USB on charging power port uh, also for connecting to computers and a regular three and a half millimeter headphone port so you don't need any kind of adapter as we already mentioned, the mute button for the speakerphone and the camera on the back. And down at the bottom, it's a series of controls. It's the call send and end, and the dedicated windows button, and the dedicated back button. Uh, I prefer the Verizon layout uh, in terms of just you know the actual red and green markings on the keys, uh, but both functionally they're they're almost identical. If you look closely, you might be able to see the little magnifying glass, you know, minus and plus here and little hash marks, tick marks across there. It's used for on-screen zooming. I'll show you how that works later as well. One of the noteworthy features of the CDMA version of the HTC Touch Pro 2 is that both the Sprint and the Verizon version are also capable of roaming outside of the US. They have support for quadband GSM and UMTS connections, 3G connections on the 2100 megahertz band that's used throughout Europe. There is one minor hardware difference, um, or actually I guess it's really software, it's just how it uses the hardware buttons. Both devices have what looks to be a power key up top, which is pretty standard for a Windows Mobile professional device, you know, one of the touchscreen equipped devices. You push this to turn the screen on, push it again to turn it off. In this case, uh, however, it does that in terms of dealing with the backlight, but actually turning the phone on and off is handled by the call end button. You can see the little power symbol there. The Sprint version of the Touch Pro 2 follows the standard theme of you know just one button does power on and off just by long pressing it. Um, not really sure why they did that. I guess more Verizon phones do it this way with the call in button so maybe it's a consistency thing. Either way it's not a big difference for the user. Um, effectively this button still turns the display and the device on and off when you're actually using it. You can see that the device is rather large um, and it has a tilt-up display. Now, personally, I've never found any use for the tilting. Uh, I don't tend to sit the phone on my desk and uh, try to use it for anything, or you know, touch typing or anything. Uh, and I tend to use it this way. But some people definitely seem to have a liking for that tilting factor, and um, they won't be disappointed here. Very solid build. Everything clicks nicely into place. Spring-loaded, dual home to move snaps into both locations open and close. As I mentioned the keyboard has a really nice feel. Each key has a good click to it. It's um, nice tactile feedback. It, it moves enough and they're well spaced out and very clearly labeled. You know you've got 
in the case of this version here, you've got the you know white text on a very dark, you know, dark brown, blackish kind of button, and a light colored background. Everything really stands out, and the bright green highlights and the orange on the Sprint version are, uh, do equally well. It's just very well designed, and like I said, it's one of the best keyboards I've used in a long time.